Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Dad News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a Philadelphia Phillies versus Florida Marlins, or Miami Marlins, excuse me, series recap. Going to try this again, been having issues with the streaming service, and it's been lagging for some reason when I've been doing the videos. Well, let's get right into the series. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate your support. The Phillies' issues with runners in scoring position obviously continued in the series as the Phillies have only won one of their last five Ball games, which was game one of this series, which was the only positive that we can really take out of this series in a big scheme of things. We're talking about game two that included something that led to a loss that wasn't really as negative as maybe some people made game two out to be. But in game one, that's really the only big positives. The Phillies had an eighth inning. You can't keep waiting to the end of the game to score, obviously. you got to get going early. I think it was 0 for 6 they were before that eighth inning. They let Chisholm put them up 3-1 to one on a two-run home run. In the top of the eighth, before Alec Bohm comes in and doubles and then just puts the Phillies down by one, the earlier run before the eighth inning was scored on a McCutcheon sack fly, and then Bohm put them down by one. Then you had Nicky Maton, who's been good all season. Joe Girardi, I think, should let him bat against some lefties. I don't know why um, he's doing that thing he did with Hazley last year at Maton. I think he should let him bat against some lefties. They talked about it on a telecast. Oh, they think he stays in well against lefties. I think it was when T-Mac was with uh, Kruk a week or so back. So I think he should get the opportunities against lefties. But anywho, he was able to get the single to tie it up here. Then Ronald Torres coming off of the IL was able to somehow get on top of a pitch at the top of the zone and rope it down the line to give the Phillies a 5-3 lead and get the deciding hit there. Well, then Gene Segura on a single gave them one insurance run to make it 6-3. And Harper on a single gave them another insurance run or two insurance runs to make it 8-3. to three. This was an unfortunate game for Zach Wheeler as he pitched seven innings, giving him no earned runs, one run in general because of an error, and he was not able to get the win. Bradley got the win in that game. But the Phillies were actually able to rally, but you cannot rely on getting going late in games to be able to win games, and that is what Game 2 came down to. The Phillies had chances again in Game 2, but could not get anything going. In this game... Our Philadelphia Phillies were one for nine with runners in scoring position and left five on base. Trevor Rogers just dominated them from pitch run. Eflin did Sawa going six innings and gave up two earned runs. He described his start as okay. That would probably be a good way to put it. But Trevor Rogers was dominant in seven two thirds, only giving up one run and striking out eight, bringing his ERA down to a one point seven four. He's been one of the hottest pitchers this year. Harper didn't even look good in that game. He was really pulling off. The only positive from that game that we really could take out of is McCutcheon on his home run off of Trevor Rogers was his 250th of his career, so congratulations to him. And the only other positive you could take is this is a game that you were not even inches but centimeters away from winning. So, yeah, you didn't, the, the, but the issue is you can't keep relying on scoring late in game. This game became because of an Andrew Knapp swing, flying out to the warding track, getting under it a bit, not even inches, but centimeters away from winning. But it goes back to you can't rely on winning late in games. The Phillies almost came back into Needham on Sunday. They didn't because they scored only late in the game. They were able to win that way in game one against the Marlins. And then in game two, they were not able to win and get going trying to score late when people got on base in the ninth inning. And then Andrew Knapp flew out as the game-winning run just to the warning track, getting under the ball, where if he swung perfectly, that thing might have even been into the second deck. But that's not on him, that he put a good swing on it. He just got under it. It's a game literally of centimeters there, and they were losing that game. But the big thing is, you got to score earlier. you got to get some things going against the starter. They got dominated by Rodgers, who, albeit, is one of the best starters all this season to start the year. But the Phillies, of course, got dominated in Game 1, too, by the starter and did not get anything going until later in the game. And um, no offense to that guy, but that Poteet guy that came up is nothing special. It's not like he's Trevor Rodgers. So you got dominated by him through five innings. So the Phillies got to figure out a way to get to the starters. You can't keep trying to hit late into games, and that's been an issue in these last five games. They've been doing terrible. I mean, I have the scores here. The Phillies did not score as they rounded out this series. This is uh, after game three. They did not score in 12 straight innings and only had one run, which was the McCutcheon home run in 18 innings. So that is unacceptable. The Phillies came into the final game of the series and just got absolutely destroyed. 
uh, six to nothing. They were unlucky from the get go and almost lost this game from the get go because Vinny Velasquez couldn't go due to a numb finger when he's actually been pitching well. But then Hale pitched a solid three innings, and then Matt Moore comes in and just gives a cookie to Garrett Cooper, who's able to hit a home run there. And then that just kind of is when they were down four nothing in a bullpen game. They had nothing going for their offense. Alcantara just looked like he was dominating them. Who's been good this year, but hasn't been um, the normal Alcantara. He brought it down to a 3-6-3, but it has been around a 4 ERA due to some struggling starts this year. They definitely got him going again. The Phillies seem to have got him going again as he brings his record to 2-3, and three, getting the win, and really looked like the Sandy Alcantara when he was dominating last year against the Phillies. They could get nothing going against him. I mean... This game, you could get nobody in runners in scoring position. You were 0 for 4 because you could barely get anybody on base. It's just unacceptable. There's no there's no hitting. You had three hits the entire game. You couldn't square anything up. It's like the Phillies literally just admitted defeat when Vince Velasquez um, was scratched, and they knew they were in a bullpen game after losing a tough one the night before when Napper just flew out to the warning track. I would think, honestly, just losing that game, barely getting defeated in that game the night before when you played a really piss poor ball game honestly for most of the game other than the pitcher Eflin pitched fairly well and then your bullpen came in and pitched all right in game two as well but then you just couldn't other than Kinsler but then you just couldn't get going to score until Knapp just missed one you can't keep doing that the Phillies keep relying on scoring late in games that was their issue in game two in game three they just couldn't even get scoring from the get-go and in game one they were luckily able to really string together hits and get going in the eighth inning there to be able to get a win that's not a recipe for success going forward having all these struggling numbers with runners in scoring position and then in some games just rallying late in games that hasn't worked except for maybe one example was an A's team from a couple years ago that kept rallying late in games that's normally not a recipe for continued success so the Phillies got to figure something out especially coming into playing a team like the Red Sox who have been a lot more consistent this year I talk about that in my series previews we got to figure something out you can't keep relying on scoring late in games it worked for you in game one thankfully in game two it did not work as Andrew Knapp just went on the one tag and then game three you couldn't hit to save your life most guys couldn't even hit a beach ball in that game Sandy Alcantara looked like Sandy Koufax um so I mean they Phillies need to figure something out here and get things going early in the games they need to get hits going in bunches that was the issue in game two you had some hits you had seven hits you put guys in scoring position you were one for nine you just got to get the hits going in groups. Ricky Bowe even said that in the post game. So the, the Phillies are just full of winning through flaws right now, and that's why I'm not getting ahead of myself. I predicted them being in third and out of the wild card by whatever margin that will put them in being in third in the division. I'm still not ready to move that prediction yet because I got fooled by the Flyers. I was over confident in them even though they were winning through flaws early in the season while doing podcasts I'm not going to do that with the Phillies because they're winning through flaws I need to see them fix these flaws of having to wait till late in games all of a sudden score and not getting it going on the starters which has been a real problem of late especially in the last um five ball games and then realistically also just having an issue with runners in scoring position all season and then just being able to group hits together. You have guys that have been getting hits. You have guys with good averages on this team. You just, for some reason, can't get anybody hitting in a group or hitting in the same ball game. And that's been an issue for the Phillies. That was the big bugaboo issue in this series, and in particularly the two losses in this series. Those were the big bugaboo issues. They luckily were able to get a rally late in the eighth inning in game one. I hope you all enjoyed this series recap of the Philadelphia Phillies versus Miami Marlins. Another frustrating series loss for the Phillies because they just can't score the runs in scoring position and for some reason just can't get anything going early in games and have to rely on getting going late in games, which only works at a small percentage of times as we saw in this series. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody, and stay tuned for my Phillies versus Red Sox series preview. Peace out and stay safe and enjoy all the great baseball.